Welcome to the CRISPR-Cas video series from the project Genetic Engineering and the Environment about the risks of CRISPR-Cas. Today I will talk about unintended changes in the genome induced by CRISPR-Cas. My name is Katharina Kaval. I have a doctorate degree in molecular biology and I will guide you through this video. The figure shows the interactions between a plant and its ecosystem. In the previous video, I already talked about the unintended effects from intended changes on the metabolism of plants and their interactions with ecosystems that can be caused by the gene scissors. Today, I'm going to explain which unintended changes can be caused due to the incorrect and imprecise use of CRISPR-Cas. The application of the gene scissors is a multi-step process in which various unintended alterations can occur. I will repeat the process of a typical CRISPR-Cas application. In the first step, the gene scissors must first be introduced into the plant cells. Currently, most often the DNA of the gene scissors is introduced into the cell, which carries the DNA for the formation of CRISPR-Cas. The gene scissors DNA is integrated into the genome here into the blue chromosome. The first step is carried out using all genetic engineering techniques, such as particle bombardment with the gene gun or acrobacterium transformation. In the next step, the cell forms the gene scissors, which recognize the target sequence and cut it. This second step is the application of the new genetic engineering techniques. After cutting the DNA, the cell's own repair mechanisms are activated, which can then induce the intended alterations at the target site. In the last step, the gene scissors DNA is segregated by further breeding steps. In this multi-step process, unintended changes in the genome that are specific to the old and new genetic engineering techniques can occur. In the next few slides, I'll explain these unintended changes in more detail. First, I will talk about errors induced by the application of old genetic engineering techniques. During integration of the DNA sequences, the DNA of the gene scissors can, for example, be inserted multiple times in the genome. The figure below exemplifies this. The gene scissors DNA is incorporated twice into the blue chromosome. Both the complete DNA sequence, or only parts of it, can be additionally integrated. In addition, unwanted DNA fragments can be integrated into the genome, coming from different sources during the process. For example, parts of the plasmid from the acrobacterium transformation, or DNA from the chloroplasts of the plants can be integrated into the genome. Chloroplasts are responsible for photosynthesis in the cell. If the gene scissors DNA is introduced with the gene gun and the chloroplasts in the cells are hit by the particles, genes from the chloroplasts can be incorporated into the genome in the cell nucleus of the plants. In addition, DNA sequences within the plant can be restructured or deleted. In addition, the composition of epigenetic markers can be changed. Epigenetic markers are small appendages to DNA or proteins that regulate gene activity. In this way, applications of old genetic engineering can therefore have an impact on the regulation of gene activity. All these errors have been described in the generation of genetically engineered plants using old genetic engineering techniques. Separately, with the new genetic engineering techniques of genome editing, such as CRISPR-Cas, unintended changes in the genome of plants can be induced. So-called off-target effects and on-target effects have been described many times in plants. In addition, unwanted DNA fragments can be integrated into the genome, and new gene products can be formed unintentionally. In the illustration, you can see yellow points 
representing off-target effects, which I will explain to you in more detail now. Off-target effects have been described in many organisms, including human, animal and plant cells. Off-target effects can arise when the gene scissors cut at unintended regions of the genome. Often these DNA regions are very similar to the target sequence and the gene scissors confuse the off-target sites with the actual target sequence. The cuts at off-target regions activate the cell's own repair mechanisms and can cause unintended changes such as point mutations there. The off-target changes can have various consequences for the organism and depend on the respective genomic context. The unintended changes can lead, for example, to gene knockouts, to alterations of gene sequences, or to an alteration of gene expression. The occurrence of off-target effects depends on the experimental conditions. Above all, the development of a specific guide RNA, the type and amount of the gene scissors used, the type of application, and also the temperature during the experiment play an important role. Next, I will talk about on-target effects. On-target effects can occur at the target site and on DNA regions nearby. On-target effects have already been described in human, animal, and plant cells. On-target effects are unintended rearrangements at the target site, as well as unintended integration of additional gene scissor DNA fragments. Here you can see a target sequence again, which is recognized and cut by the gene scissors. The DNA double strand break can either be repaired in such a way that the original state is restored, or a change can be induced at the target site, as intended by the user, leading, for example, to a gene knockout. There's also the possibility that large or small insertions are integrated into the target site. In addition, large or small deletions can occur in the target region. Plant DNA sequences can also be incorporated at another part of the genome, which is called a translocation. In addition, the orientation of the target DNA region can be reversed, which is known as an inversion. The mechanisms that are responsible for the occurrence of these unwanted changes are not yet fully understood. Other unintended changes at the target sequence can occur when DNA templates are used. Here you can see how a DNA template is integrated into the target site with the help of the HDR repair. Various studies have shown that errors can also happen during that process. The DNA or parts of it, for example, can be incorporated several times. Such unintended effects can, of course, also occur in off-target areas. Here you can see again the overview of the already known unintended changes in the genome that are specific to the application of CRISPR-Cas. I will explain the last point on the list now, the unintended formation of new gene products. The intended changes in the DNA sequence marked here in red can lead to the formation of new gene products. I need to explain a few more biological basics so that you can understand better what I mean by unintended formation of new gene products. Here you can see a piece of DNA. Marked in red, you can see the DNA sequence of a gene. When this gene is expressed, several copies of the associated mRNA, also known as messenger RNA, are created. An mRNA carries the genetic information for the generation of the associated protein. The mRNAs are translated outside the cell nucleus into the corresponding protein, shown here in Turkey's. Proteins have a variety of functions in the cell and are involved in the production of various metabolic products that are required, for example, as messenger substances, as components of the cell wall, or other metabolic processes. Here you can see a target gene which is intended to be changed with the gene scissors. 
The gene scissors cut at the target sequence and activate the cell's own repair mechanisms, which can incorporate errors in the target sequence. These changes can have different intended effects. On the left side, no mRNA and no protein is formed. On the other side, certain changes in the DNA sequence can lead to the formation of mRNAs with a different composition. The mRNA can, for example, carry a deletion in its sequence, which can also result in the formation of a truncated protein that can't perform a certain function. However, mRNAs can also arise unexpectedly and lead to the formation of new proteins, which can be overlooked by the developer. Here you can see a gene knockout in the target gene induced by CRISPR-Cas. The intended changes at the target sequence can lead to the formation of unintended mRNAs by an effect known as exon skipping. During exon skipping, the intended change at the target site, shown in the figure in green, changes a region of the DNA sequence that is important for the correct composition of the corresponding mRNA. This can result in a specific area of the mRNA being unintentionally cut out. This process is also called splicing. This can result in truncated mRNAs and proteins. The truncated protein can still be functional. In addition, the intended changes can lead to the generation of so-called frameshift mutations. Frameshift means that the reading frame of the DNA sequence of genes is changed and the genes can be read differently. As a result, novel mRNAs and proteins can be formed, which can perform new functions in the cell's metabolism. Such unintended effects are often not recognized at the DNA level. Such errors could be important, as changes in protein composition is an important consideration for environmental and food safety. For example, allergens are proteins that can cause an immune response in the consumer. At the end of this video, I will explain to you which methods can be used to analyze genome-edited organisms and to detect unintended alterations. The generic term for such analysis methods is omics. Omics analysis enables scientists to study different levels within a cell. Here we start at the DNA level. Under the term genomics, various DNA analysis methods are summarized. With such methods, unintended changes in the DNA sequence, such as off-target effects, or additionally inserted DNA fragments can be identified. Methods that determine all RNA molecules in a cell are summarized under transcriptomics. For example, mRNAs can be identified that are present in a truncated form as a result of exon skipping or completely new mRNAs that have been created by frameshift mutations. Proteomics methods are used to determine all proteins inside a cell. And metabolomics methods examine the exact composition of metabolic products within a cell. These methods can be used, for example, to determine whether the intended changes at the target site have resulted in the formation of unwanted metabolic products. In this video, I showed you that the gene scissors are used in a multi-step process that typically combines the methods of old and new genetic engineering. Unintended changes can occur during these processes. With the old genetic engineering, unintended changes in the DNA sequence and epigenetic marker can occur. For example, DNA sequences can be integrated into the genome. In addition, it has also been observed that the distribution of epigenetic markers has changed through the application of the old genetic engineering methods. With the application of CRISPR-Cas, off-target and on-target effects can occur and additional DNA fragments can be integrated into the genome. Alterations at the target site can lead to the unintended formation of new gene products, such as mRNAs or proteins. With the help of omics analysis, unintended changes in the DNA sequence, formed RNAs, proteins, and metabolic products within the cell 
can be analyzed. Thank you for your attention. You can find more information at the website of the Project Genetic Engineering and the Environment.